Hey guys, what's going on? McMole2 here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you a tutorial on how to use your resistance team with the Zeta on Finn for Phase 2. This is the team that goes crazy with the exposes, does a lot of turn meter boost and cooldown reductions. The overall record right now for Phase 2 I think is 7.2 or 7.4. It's probably going to be broken by the time I post this video. So yeah, this team is doing crazy amounts of damage right now in Phase 2. And it's also really, really fun to use. So yeah, I'm doing this tutorial so I can show you guys what kind of mods you should be using and the overall strategy. So let's go ahead and stop, let's take a look at the mods, and then we will go from there. So first up we have Finn, he is going to be your lead for the tank raid with the resistance team, and that's because of his leadership ability with balanced tactics, that is the Zeta upgrade that I was talking about. And what happens with the Zeta is whenever a resistance ally loses foresight, they gain advantage. Whenever an enemy takes damage from exposed, reduces the cooldowns of all resistance allies by one, and also gives them 35% turn meter. So basically when you chain resistance or you chain your exposes together, like you will do in the tank raid with all the exposes in this team, you're basically gonna be getting a lot of turn meter, you're gonna get a lot of cooldown reductions, and that just means more exposes, more damage for this team, and it just goes balls to the wall and it just goes crazy. So anyways, you have that. I also recommend that you Omega the takedown upgrade for him as well because it guarantees the exposed chance on his takedown attack. And then also look at hold down the line because it dispels all debuffs from your allies. So when the tank does its fire shells and everybody gets those dots, you can use that to help cleanse them. It keeps your team alive a little bit longer, gives them more survivability. The crack shot, you don't really need too much, just gives more damage and the bonus damage is kind of negligible since you're going to be attacking since you after you attack the first time with that attack it's not going to do any bonus damage so you have that as you can see here i've got basically full potency on him i have speed on the arrow defense on the triangle more potency on the cross and then of course the other ones are kind of given your protection basically i'm going for a combination of speed and potency here as you can see he's running at 182 speed he's got 63 bonus speed and then look at that, almost 90% potency. So that's going to be critical because his expose is the only guaranteed chance out of all the resistance characters. He's got some armor, he's basically going to be your other tank besides Poe. And then going to the next character, speaking of Poe, you also have him. The only ones I have omega are his taunt, so it's the bonus expose chance, so it goes up to 65% expose chance for him. And then you have the Stand Firm, where he gains all that bonus tenacity and recovers 7.5% of his max health and resists a negative status effect. Finn also gains these bonuses if he is present. So it's vital to have these two characters together because they're going to be your tanks and they're going to keep the characters alive. So you can see I'm going for more speed on him as well. Also going for potency because, again, that exposed chance is really nice to have. He's only at 199 speed. Your resistance teams like to have him a whole lot faster, like 230 speed plus. So yeah, as you can see, I've got some work here to do on him. I've got him at only 55% potency. So yeah, he's got some work to do as well. He's got that bonus tenacity from his unique that isn't calculated in here. So he's got a lot of tenacity as well. So thankfully him and Finn can resist a lot of those fire shells. Then you have resistance trooper where he is going to be moving the fastest out of all your characters. He's got the decent 65% chance to expose here. He's got the opportunity strike, which is going to be the ability that gives the speed down for your team as well. So you're gonna want that. And then Gorilla Tactics, where he gains all that turn meter from exposes on the target. So he's gonna be moving fast. You don't really have to go for speed so much on him, but definitely go for potency again, because you want that speed down. So you want that in as well. He also has some decent crit chance. So getting a crit damage triangle on him isn't too bad of an idea there. So you can see I'm going for more potency on him. You see he's at 77.5% potency. He's fast too. I don't really need to focus on speed so much for him since he gets all the bonus turn meter from exposes. But having him fast is nice and just in case the exposes don't land. And he's the only character in this team that can do expose on his basic. So then you have Resistance Pilot, you've got the Omegas on her outmaneuver for the bonus exposed chance there, and then Gorilla Tactics doesn't have any Omega or anything, but I also recommend you get this as well because she gets Foresight from outmaneuver, 
and she has a decent crit chance. So it's a lot of bonus turn meter from her there, plus she gets advantage. So yeah, definitely focus on that, get speed on her as well, get some potency, go for that crit chance on her because again, she scores critical hits, then she gains that bonus turn meter. So she's going to be going a lot too, just like your resistance trooper. So yeah, definitely go for potency with her. As you can see, I've got her 90%. I've got her 174 speed. Again, not that impressive, but 56% crit chance. That's pretty good. You're going to like that. And then, of course, you're going to have your heavy damage dealer. None other than Mrs. I like to beat everybody with staffs. I don't know. I need to do better nicknames. Anyways, so yeah, crit chance, crit damage, of course. So yeah, speed. Crit damage, offense, go for it, lots of crit chance, lots of offense, stack it up on her, make her go fast, make her hit hard, and yeah, that's about all you need to do for her. Of course, uh, it's recommended that you Omega all three of her abilities, as you can see. I only have Leverage and Flurry omega but really, as the fight goes on, that's all you need omega for her anyways. So yeah, that's the overall mods and abilities for this team, so let's go ahead and talk strategy, and we will go from there. So, I mentioned earlier there were some changes to the mechanics for Exposed recently, and what happened before is that when you had an attack that could expose and use it against a target that was already exposed, the exposes would not stack, as in you couldn't do the exposed damage and then reapply another expose after that was done. What they have now done instead is they have fixed that, so if you use an attack on an exposed target and that attack can also expose, what you can do then is cause the exposed damage and then you apply another exposed right after that like you'll see here in a moment that when i use the exposed uh, ability that can expose on top of an exposed target like right there you can see that the exposed damage was applied gave the cooldown reduction and turn meter increase to my resistance team but also applied another expose on top of that you can also expect you also stack your exposes now so like you can see on that right turret i have two exposes there but if i do damage right now it can technically apply both exposes there at once. You would actually gain the double benefit. So you'd get the cooldown reduction of two plus the 70% turn meter. But if there's not enough health, it would only do enough damage for one expose. So you won't get the benefit of both. But you can see here, that's what's going on now. What has caused this resistance team to be so good is because you can just stack these exposes and do a ton of exposed damage, a ton of turn meter increase, a ton of cooldown reductions, and this team can just go ham and just keep going and it just never stops. It's like an Energizer Bunny, basically. And it's beautiful and it's super fun. And I just can't tell you how entertaining it is to have this go on. So anyways, in terms of what can expose, you have the specials from Finn and Pilot that can both apply expose, and then you have the basic attack from Trooper that can also expose, and then you also have the taunt from Poe, but that one's kind of iffy because it's such a long cooldown, so you have to be careful there. But in terms of what's above the exposes here, Finn has a guaranteed as long as he passes the potency check, and then Pilot has a 65% chance, same with Trooper. Pilot can actually gain foresight from her special and when that expires she gains advantage and of course she has the critical hits which give her even more boosted turn meter so she goes fast but you have resistance trooper who gains all that turn meter from exposed whenever someone gets exposed so you have to be careful or you have to get a lot of exposes with him and he just starts going fast and then basically he just kind of turns to this machine gun and he just keeps going and going so oh, in terms of overall strategy Definitely, definitely use the exposed attacks as much as often. Be careful with pose during the topple because if you're pretty close to the end of a topple and you use that expose, you run to the risk of the tank coming up and no one's taunting and he can kill off your pilot or your trooper really quickly, even Ray. And if one of those characters dies, you're going to have a really, really bad run. So for Ray, because of all the tour all the cooldown reduction, she's basically going to be alternating between her leverage and her flurry of blows. And what you're going to be doing is the leverage will consistently keep her offense up, and then her flurry of blows can do all those attacks and do a lot of damage. And you can see here during the during the topple, she almost hit 40k on her initial flurries a couple of times, and she does a mad amount of damage. So yeah, alternate that. Um, but also, you notice I use uh, Finn's ability to heal himself. He's a little low on health, so you have to be careful with him there. And then of course, you just use 
all these exposed attacks and you just keep exposing you gain all this bonus turn meter for resistance trooper he can expose a lot on his basic attack so really the trick is get as many exposes as you can with this team and just go ham with it and just go crazy and have fun and laugh maniacally as you just, just watch the tank just lose so much health i'm not going to spoil how much damage i did here i did a pretty good amount for the mods i had on them you see a lot of people going for more like health and crit chance and tenacity mods really i just went all in on potency because i figured you know Potency, the more potency these characters have, the less likely they're ha they are to have their resistance, or have their exposes resisted. So, really, just stack that potency if you have less, uh, less high quality mods like I do for this kind of team. But really, once you can get some better speed mods that also have some really good potency on them, use that. The faster your resistance team goes, the better off they're going to recover, especially if you run into an issue where you have, uh, like the tank just resist a bunch of potency or resist a bunch of exposes and then if all those all those exposes get resisted then the faster your team is the more likely they are to recover and the less likely you're going to have the tank come up and you're going to lose out on all that potential damage so really just kind of be careful with it but also feel free to just go crazy and just have a blast with this team because it's just at the end of the day it's just really fun to have but of course, with the tank up, use Poe's taunt as much as possible because each turret can get exposed through his taunt. And if you can get all the turrets exposed at once, that just means a lot of bonus turn meter gain and that means a really fast topple. I saw, I didn't record this at the very beginning, I forgot to, but the first turn, uh, the tank didn't even get to move the first time, I already had it toppled before it could go. And that, I've never actually done it, even with my clones, I've never been able to do that before. So that was a shock for me, that was really nice to have in there, it was a nice surprise. But really, just be careful with the expose, with the taunts from Poe. Just time it correctly and be careful. And then of course, your resistance trooper, he gains all that bonus turn meter. And then you also have a special where he can give speed down. So your trick there is that you want to give the tank speed down before the tank is toppled. Because once that tank is toppled, you're missing out on all those potential exposes thanks to his basic attack. So really, you want to try and get speed down on the main body before it topples. Of course, that won't always happen. You can see here, for some reason, I decided I didn't want to do that right now. I wanted to focus more on getting the turrets down. I'm not sure why, but you can see here in a second there, I tried to use a special on the main tank to try and get some speed down on it you're not always going to get it to happen it's only a 50 percent chance and sometimes the rng gods just decide that you are not worthy and there's really nothing you can do about that so yeah you gotta be careful with that but anyways guys that is the overall strategy there's some tips and tricks in there some things to keep in mind when you're trying out this team but really once uh once you have this mastered you're gonna have a lot of damage going with this team and it's really really quite fun so yeah guys that is my overall strategy for how to tackle the tank in phase two with your resistance team let me know what you guys think in the comments below always feel free to like and share this video and feel free to subscribe to my channel as well i'm doing a lot more of these tutorial videos kind of things i'm getting, getting some pretty good feedback from the one where i did the princess zodi tutorial so you know i'm gonna be doing more of these tutorial videos and you're just kind of showing the mods giving the overall strategy and showing off my team as it goes through the raid as it is but anyways guys thanks for watching feel free to watch to the very end to see the damage screen and i will talk to you guys later